three people were dead, one barely clinging to life. And the man allegedly at the center of it all was a convicted felon, released early from prison less than three weeks before. Grandma, is KK in heaven? Yes, baby. KK in heaven, Papa in heaven. You're not saying it all. Don't share no fake tears. And we are back with another one, my fellow true crime family. I'm the mysterious black bandit. And if you're new to this channel, let me welcome you to the number one most perplexing and mystifying cases on YouTube. And those that have been here, thank you so much. Now before we jump into this video, go ahead and do your boy a favor and hit that like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on none of these videos when I upload. Okay, check this out. Could y'all imagine one day taking your child over to your parents' house so you could go run a few errands only to receive a phone call that your uncle not only took the life of your parents but took the life of your child? Sheesh. Well, in today's video, we'll be learning about one of the most gruesome and devastating stories I have read in a while. So if you're watching, just know viewer discretion is advised. On January 18, 2021, 42-year-old Lawrence Paul Anderson, a convicted felon, was released from prison after the Oklahoma Pardon and Parole Board approved a house bill that changed the guidelines on some drug and property crimes. As a part of this criminal justice reform, one thing this bill did was reclassify simple drug possession as a misdemeanor rather than a felony and also expunge any old possession felonies so it would carry a lighter sentence. At the time, Oklahoma had one of the highest incarceration rates in the U.S., so what the passing of this law did was accelerate the commutation process. Now, Lawrence had been sentenced in 2017 to 20 years in prison for a probation violation on a gun and drug case, but he was among more than 800 Oklahoma inmates whose application for commutation was considered and signed off on by Governor Kevin Stitt. So instead of him having to serve the full 20 years, he only had to serve a little more than three years and was released on probation. Not even three weeks after he was set free, he decided to commit one of the most heinous crimes there is. On or around February 9, 2021, Lawrence, who was allegedly staying at his aunt and uncle's house, goes over to Andrea Blankenship's home, which was across the street, breaks down her door with brute force and stabs her multiple times for no reason at all. Then, once he noticed that she was dead, this man picks up the knife, her chest and rips it open and carves out her heart. Afterwards, he walks back over to his aunt and uncle's house with the heart, goes inside the kitchen, cuts up some potatoes, and started cooking them with the heart in a skillet. Now, once he felt that it was done, he then tries to serve it to his aunt and uncle, stating he wanted to release some demons. But when they refused, he attacked them and the child with the knife. Now, apparently, Lawrence thought that he had killed everyone in the house and just walks away and sits down in the kitchen, but Delcy, his aunt, was actually playing dead. Once she seen that he was nowhere in sight, she grabs the phone and dials 911, but when she noticed that he was coming back, she quickly hung up the phone and laid there motionless. Fortunately, after the call was made, the dispatcher went ahead and sent the Chickasha police officers over to their home to make sure everything was all right. Once they got there, they walked up to the door and started to knock. And this is when one of the officers heard someone inside calling for help. So the officers forced their way inside only to find his uncle and the granddaughter lying on the floor dead. Now, once his aunt knew it was the police, she scrambled over to one of the officers while the other one checked out the rest of the house. The officer stated when he saw Lawrence, he was just sitting there and started vomiting on the floor. Now, once the paramedics arrived, Desi and Lawrence were rushed to the hospital to treat their wounds. And I'm not sure what happened to Lawrence, but the wounds his aunt suffered were detrimental. Reports stated that Lawrence had stabbed her so hard in the face and head, he actually got one of her eyes out. But fortunately, she survived the attack. Now, it was stated that while Lawrence was in custody at the hospital, he confessed to the two murders and told investigators that there was another victim. This is when he admitted to also killing his neighbor, 41-year-old mother of two, Andrea Lynn Blankenship, who lived on the same street as his aunt and uncle. 
So on February 12th, the investigators sent officers back out to the house to check. And when they got there, they realized he was indeed telling the truth. Now, once Lawrence was discharged from the hospital, police transported him to the Grady County Jail to await trial that was set on April 1st. But before, he had to seek mental evaluation to determine if he was competent enough to stand trial because, allegedly, he was on medication for a bipolar disorder. This case rocked just about the whole state of Oklahoma, and even before this happened, a lot of people were already criticizing the commutation bill that was passed by the governor and the Oklahoma Pardon and Parole Board. But when the news came out that Lawrence was wrongly placed on the commutation docket in August of 2019, after the board in July of 2019 rejected his request, had everyone in an outrage. You see, Lawrence had a pretty long and violent criminal history that dated all the way back to 2006 when he was sentenced for possession of with the intent to distribute and for threatening his girlfriend with a gun. For that charge, he served less than two years of a four-year sentence. Then in 2012, he returned to prison with a 15-year sentence for selling near an elementary school. But yet again, he was released early after serving less than six years, and this time, he was put on probation. Now, you would think that he would kind of get himself together after being released from prison those two times, but not even a full two years had passed before he was in trouble again. In 2017, Lawrence violated that probation by possessing a gun and using drugs and was sent back to prison to serve a 20-year sentence, but with his luck or the messed up system, he was released early yet again. And just a side note, from the looks of it, he had way more convictions than what we just talked about, but I'll just post those here so y'all can see them. Now, after it was determined that he was sane enough to stand trial, Lawrence took a plea deal in order to escape that death penalty. After he pleaded guilty to three counts of murder and a single count of maiming, assault, and battery, that plea deal ordered him to serve five consecutive life terms and the first without the possibility of parole. Then he was ordered to pay fines, restitution, and court costs and had to agree to never appeal, never seek commutation again, and never make a book deal or participate in telling his story to the media. Now, during the sentencing, Tasha Yates, the mother of the child, read off her impact letter that said she was the kindest and didn't deserve this. Then she yelled, who kills a who does that? And at the end of her statement, she stated, I pray you hear my baby girl as she told you she loved you and that she didn't want to die. Then she cursed Lawrence and ran out the courtroom. During that emotional testimony, another granddaughter of the victim shouted out, I hope you rot from the inside out, and I hate you for everything you've done to us. As a result of this fatal mistake, Desi Pye and the family of the victims have a pending lawsuit against the governor, the pardon and parole board, and others for federal civil rights violations related to Lawrence Anderson's release. And that will bring this video to an end, my good people. I can't even fathom taking my child to my parents' house to visit them just to receive a phone call that my child and my parents have been killed by another so-called member of the family. I don't know if it was the drugs or what that made him do such a thing, but regardless, I would definitely be pushing for capital punishment. Well, y'all let me know what you think about this one. And if you don't mind, please hit that like, subscribe, and turn those notifications on so you don't miss out on any of these good videos. Y'all make sure you have an amazing day and remember to live and let live. And until next time, stay mysterious, my